at stage two. Anthony, so how is mental health viewed in your family? Whoa. All right. Well, I think mental health in general in my so I come from my my family's Colombian. I'm a first generation American, and I I don't think this is specific to my family. I think it's specific to our culture and that generation. But there is very much a negative stigma to um, mental. Like even like the words mental health, there's this view that to say you're sad about something is saying that like it's also saying I'm not appreciative about the good things, and I and I see this sort of lack of balance in when I have conversations with my parents specifically, um, where it's like I can say that I am struggling with something or I want something to I want to work on it without negating or disrespecting the other things in my life that are good. And in fact, I think that sort of by having an awareness of both of those things that I can actually move forward and grow because I can say like, I am depressed, but I am also so grateful for the support system I have. And I know because of those things and be, me be mindful that I could like move forward. And I feel like in my family, my culture, it's sort of like just throw that under the, like the bed. Don't worry about that. Keep moving. And I feel like it doesn't, allow you to really grow as a person because how can you grow if you can't even acknowledge the pain that you're in so it's definitely like a taboo thing like when i first told my parents i was going to therapy they were like why are you going to therapy and what did we do wrong and it was very like not supportive and now i realize it's not i don't blame them they just weren't really ever told that it was okay or that everyone gets fucking sad sometimes i feel like it was not it's like so weird because i feel like with especially like people my age their parents i feel like therapy was never a thing um and i feel like it was kind of like oh you feel this way well you kind of have to deal with it because that's life so i think when i um started going to therapy and stuff um it was just weird to my family um, I think my sister was very accepting of it, but I think to others, it was like, oh, if you're going to therapy, you're like severely depressed and like all that mumbo jumbo, but it's like, okay, what if I am? Like, I'm like reaching out to somebody for help. So I think it should be more accepting, but I feel like with my family, it was accepting, but it was more of like, why do you need it? If like your life kind of seems fine. <laughs> um well I come from a very traditional Hispanic family so I feel like while I was growing up it was never really talked about um I feel like my parents have opened up a little bit more now like that they've seen how well therapy has like gone for me and everything but when when we talk about it still like as a family like if my grandmother's a part of the conversation like my aunts uncles all of the above they're like well why why don't you just deal with it and like keep going you know like why do you need professional help they're very like clear and honest about what they feel in those types of situations. And it's not even about me being fucked up. It's literally just having that support system, like having someone to talk to that's a complete stranger that doesn't know anything about me. And I can just say what I want without feeling any sort of shame or judgment. Or judgment. You know, that I'm feeling things that are normal and they can be worked through, you know, but my family doesn't really understand that. Mental illness definitely runs in my family. And now that I moved out and like have my own life, and then when I go back to visit, I can clearly see the signs of mental illness in my family. Like my grandmother, my mother, my sister, they all definitely have anxiety. But if I'll be like, hey, like you have anxiety, you should probably, you know, 
do something about it like try to work with it they're like nah i'm fine like i don't know what you're talking about like nope um so it sometimes it is very challenging because i am the only one that goes to therapy in my family and it's a lot of weight on my shoulders but at the same time i'm like i mean someone has to do it do you have any triggers and what do they feel like i do have triggers i am triggered by feeling like i'm not being supported sometimes um or feeling like someone may be projecting onto me and i want to be like clear i am mindful that me feeling that doesn't mean that that's what's happening but i see sometimes or i feel sometimes my mind create that paint that narrative where i if i feel like i'm not being supported in a way that i know i would support that person i'm like why is this person not reciprocating what what i would do for them and i like i paint a picture like i write a narrative of what it is and it's not that at all almost all the time and whenever i feel like people are potentially projecting onto me i find myself sometimes i like distance myself and that comes from a, tra a traumatic relationship that i was in before where i felt a lot of someone I experienced a lot of someone taking their pain and putting it onto me. So now when I feel like that may be happening in a way that I'm not like inviting, I'm not saying like, hey, I'm here for you. Let's talk about this. It's just, I just feel it coming onto me. I find that that triggers me to disconnect and become cold. And I don't love that. It's definitely like a trauma response, but I am working on it. It helps having a very healthy and understanding partner in that regards, because that person could act as a mirror for me to see when I'm, when I'm fucking up. I feel like with my father, uh, a trigger when I was, I mean, like he left and I think I was very like scared of um, being alone or abandonment. Yeah. Um, I was scared of that. And I feel like that kind of carried on to me now. And I have that fear of being abandoned. And it, um, I think a trigger is like when I feel like a friend or whoever is like tired of me, I'm like, oh, they're gonna completely leave my life or like just always scared of being left. So I think that can be a trigger for me now. Right. <laughs> Hashtag daddy issues. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I definitely do have triggers. Um, like I said before, like I have a deep fear of abandonment. So when I feel someone like retract themselves or like distance themselves from me, that is definitely triggered. Like that feeling of, oh, this person's gonna leave me, you know, and then I'm gonna be all alone. And I don't want to be alone obviously. Um, I feel like that's the one that manifests the most in my life because I feel like we all go through shit, you know, and sometimes that um, results in, you know, like that person's own trauma being triggered and like taking a step back. Um, and then that triggers my trauma. <laughs> like, yeah, it's just weird. But I feel, yeah, that's definitely the one that I feel the most. Um, yeah. How do you cope throughout your days? Like, what are some coping mechanisms that you I find that spending time with my brother is some of the most, like, therapeutic time that I have. I really cherish that. I feel like him and I sort of get each other, but like from a source perspective, like from a before we were even existing, we were like there with each other. So I feel that and it's like, because I meditate, I try to meditate every single day. I exercise is like a big thing for me, like just to feel good, to feel my body moving, to ground me in the present. But sometimes that, that can only have so much of an impact, but I, like when I can, spend time with my brother, I am like reminded of like, love exists in this life right now. And I feel it 
with him and I could feel it within myself for myself when I'm with him. And so he's kind of like one of my like supports and pillars in this life that allows me to on a bad day, I won't feel as bad with him. Yeah. It depends on the day. I think sometimes like I would want to like in front of the camera be like, oh, I'm meditating and you know, but honestly, like sometimes meditating doesn't help me. Um, and sometimes I can't breathe through it and it's hard. So I would say sometimes music helps. Listening to Rex Orange County <laughs> definitely helps. Um, but yeah, really sometimes art helps. It, it really depends on how, um, like what I need coping with at the, at the moment and what my body is telling me that I need. Uh, I mean, recently, this is gonna sound very basic, but recently I've been getting more and more like into meditation. Um, I got a book recently. It's really good. Y'all should read it. It's called um, Mindfulness in Plain English. It's a very good book for like beginners in meditation and like the reasoning behind like the practice, I guess. Um, it's been very helpful because like when I first started therapy, she recommended meditation and I tried it for a while, but it didn't really do it for me. But now that I'm learning more about like the basics of the practice and basically how it works, you know, I feel like that's definitely helped me understand more and like actually encourage me to try it. Um, I journal a lot because like I'm a writer, so I write a lot. Um, my poetry really helps me like um, express the feelings that I feel like I can't say out loud. And especially because my poetry is in Spanish, like my first language is Spanish. So sometimes I feel like I can't express myself in English. Like I can't find the words. Um, so I feel like that's definitely been helping me recently with just, you know, putting it down on paper and, you know, just letting it flow through me, not having to like think through every single thing that I'm saying, I'm just writing. So that feels pretty good. And just like hanging out with my friends, like being with the people that I love really helps um, ground me when I'm kind of just floating through disassociating because that happens to me a lot. Um, but I've definitely felt more grounded and present in my life than I have in like two years. So that's good. So how has the status of your mental health reflected in what or how you create? I feel like that in the art that I create, that I have a hand in actually like sort of, um, when I'm not just supporting, when I'm like building an idea, that I try to really exhibit an example of what it feels like to sit with the both the good and the bad and to communicate it in a way where it's like the beauty of the experience is balancing in the both of them. It's not just sort of, trying to always feel good or it's or trying to avoid feeling bad it's just about allowing yourself to feel period and i feel like i try to have that show in my art like in in the films that i make in one way or another where it's like that being present with it is the that's the end goal it's not what comes from being what happens when i'm present with it it's like just being present with it not having like a means to an end um and understanding that every moment in itself is the end. And I try to really embed that in some way into my art. I lean on my art a lot to um, express my sadness and traumas that I've been through. Um, I feel like that's my one ex es escape. Um, where I really don't like talking much about what I go through. So instead of like keeping all of that in, I might just paint it out. Um, and that's why I cry, cry. That's why I draw a lot of crying like people is because I feel like it just is 
kind of like an escapism in a way, but it also is healing. <laughs> I feel like, especially with my poetry, I feel like that is my medium to ex like express myself and like my inner thoughts, like my inner dialogue and, you know, use it as the way for me to really, really express myself and what I'm feeling in the moment. Um, so I feel like it's, my poetry specifically is very much tied to like my mental health and like my struggles and what I've been through. Um, but I'm also really starting this kind of create like authentic creative journey because I used to do like theater and dance and I've never really created something from scratch. Like this project really was the first thing that I thought of that was like, me creating something from nothing. So I guess we can come back to that question later.